Hey guys, how's it going? Chairs back again with a, a kind of a, an extra bonus episode, I suppose. It's the Player of the Year Awards. Now, it's only going to be an extra mini episode, so uh, it won't take up one of your daily career mode slots. So this will be as a potentially second or even third upload during the day, considering Team of the Year will be out by the time you see this as well. So uh, I am planning on doing some, uh, some pack openings for Team of the Year. So uh, be sure to keep tuned to the channel. For, uh, for those, if you uh, that's something you might like to see, of course, uh, feel free to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out, so it'll be in your sub box, etc. But um, yes, Player of the Year awards. Now let's start off with uh, with the obvious ones to start straight away. Top goal scorer, that's one that everyone always wants to know. And our top goal scorer this year was actually Fernando Torres. 18 goals in all competitions, a fantastic return, as well as 7 assists, 7 goals in 21 Premier League appearances, which is good. A goal in every 3 games, not his best competition though, as you can see. The Champions League, almost a goal a game, 9 in 10 appearances in the Champions League, fantastic return from Fernando Torres, obviously scored the opening goal in the Champions League final, which you will have seen either earlier today or yesterday, I'm not too sure when you'll be seeing this, but feel free to check the channel page to make sure that you don't miss the, the Champions League final, Chelsea versus Bayern Munich, the rematch, but uh, top assists is of course the one to follow up top goal scorer, and our top assist getter, I suppose, this year is actually Eden Hazard, as you can see, 12 assists, as well as 6 goals, so contribute Contributing on both sides of uh, of the uh, of the sheet, obviously scoring as well as providing the chances. Seven assists in the Premier League, two in the Champions League, three in the Capital One Cup. And unfortunately, not the best of performances from him in the FA Cup, which you can see four four uh, four appearances in total and uh, six point four average rating. So that really isn't the best. But who was the most consistent player? The player that you know chipped in all the time and that player actually was Branislav Ivanovic now he's up here somewhere where is he there we go 7.4 average rating and look at the BPL 23 games total and he averaged averaged 7.5 that's awesome that is an absolutely phenomenal performance from a defender that didn't find himself in the the starting lineup obviously our two main center backs Rafael Varane and David Luiz whenever we had to call on Branner he was right there and put in awesome fantastic performances every single time so very very pleased with Branislav Ivanovic this year so uh, let's start then with uh, the player of the year awards and uh, we'll go with, with defender of the year so far and that again is Branislav Ivanovic considering he was just so solid for us whenever we called on him and did play over half of the games in the BPL let's compare him with say David Luiz who was our other centre back as you can see he played a lot of games in the league and in the Champions League, but uh, wasn't as consistent. And then, of course, Rafael Varane was our other main centre-back. And again, not as many performances, even though you would consider him our starting centre-back. So, uh, very, very pleased that Brana was able to come in. It, it felt like he was a rotation player, but the performances that he put in, I mean, you've seen it throughout the series, and the stats don't lie. Absolutely fantastic, consistent performer, and not only is he consistent, he's consistent at a very, very high level as well. So extremely pleased with Branislav Ivanovic. The midfielder of the year award, as you may have guessed, will probably be going to uh, to Eden Hazard as well. Where is he? There he is. Again, of course, six assists, 12 goals, fantastic performance. He's quite consistent as well, as you can see. High sevens in the Capital One Cup, 7.7 .7 average rating in the five games, absolutely superb. 7.2 average in the BPL, very, very good again. And 7.1 overall, of course, as you can see, the Champions League and the FA Cup performance. He's kind of dropping that down a little bit, but still an extremely good player. And it's no surprise whatsoever that the uh, the attacker of the year goes to Fernando Torres, our main goal scorer, especially when uh, Sammy Leto was out injured for a while. Diego Costa was uh, broken, his ankle was out for three months. Really, really fantastic player for us. Of course, we sold Demba Bar uh, in the initial transfer window, the summer transfer window, before the season even started. And Torres came up trumps all year long. So very, very pleased with Fernando Torres. Now, a couple of miscellaneous ones we're going to put in there before we get to the overall player and subscribers player of the year. And uh, we're actually going to start with most improved. Now, the player that actually improved the most during the year was, in fact, uh, Rafael Varane over... No, it was Danilo, plus four in his overall rating. Let's have a look at his quick stats. Now, uh, of course, at the end, I will go through a squad report, uh, just kind of in the background, so you can see everyone's stats. And if you'd like to pause it uh, when I go through that, then feel free to see anyone in particular, their, uh, their growth throughout the year. But most improved is Danilo. As you can see, the, the, the crucial stats... Acceleration, plus two. Speed, plus one. But look at his defensive stats. Stand tackle, plus five. Sliding tackle, plus five. He's growing in the most 
you know, uh, quintessentially, not quintessential, what's the word I'm looking for? He's growing in the c most crucial of areas. His defensive tackling is much improved. His ball control is better. His crossing is better. His short passing is up four as well. His long passing, where's that? I'm trying to find it. Long passing. Where's long passing? Long passing, plus three. There we go, 79. Sorry, my eyes were all over there. Uh, long passing is up three. Is everything that you want from a wing back is in Danilo and getting better. His strength is up three as well. He is the most improved and whilst we're on Danilo I will give him the Young Player of the Year award as well. He's only 22, came into the club when he was 21 and we do have a very very young squad at Chelsea right now so uh, there's definitely a lot to build on for the future but Danilo is the player that picks up Young Player of the Year. Now the biggest disappointment of the year now this is uh, this is one that might be a little bit controversial because the first player is actually a joint award. First one is Juan Mata. As you can see, none of his stats have improved over the course of the year. And he has played a lot of games. 40 games total. And he only averaged 6.8. Only 6 goals, only 4 assists from a player that's worth almost 25 million. Rated 87 overall. Has fantastic base stats, especially when it comes to passing and uh, just general ball control and setting up play creativity etc you really expected more from Juan Mata he's the highest rated player in the squad and uh, he just was an absolute disappointment we toyed with selling him in January and we'll have to wait and see what happens during the upcoming uh, summer transfer window but the other joint award for uh, for my biggest disappointment it actually comes from Diego Costa now I uh, he started absolutely superbly of course scored a hat trick on debut but you'll be able to tell he's actually lost ratings he's lost his attributes over the course of the 12 months or yeah over the course of the 12 months he's been at the club he's been here since last summer and he's actually gone down not overall but uh, on an individual stat base he's gone down and not shown any growth anywhere else and his place at the club is specifically under threat I am looking to move Diego Costa on in this summer transfer window Samuel Eto'o is running out of contract at the end of the summer and he's on 110 grand a week as you can see he's going down now in every stat so uh, he won't be having his contract renewed. Samueletto is on his way out. So I am definitely looking for a striker in the summer transfer window. So that is something we can crack on with in future episodes. Now the biggest surprise, positive surprise of the uh, of the season is actually Andre Scherler. Now going into the season, he was a player that I was going to look to move out. Having played with him on current gen and on Ultimate Team on both generations of console, 360 and Xbox One, I really didn't like how Andre Scherler played, but in career mode, he was just phenomenal. As you can see, 9 goals, 10 assists, very, very high average rating, particularly effective in the Champions League. Just absolutely fantastic player for us. We started the season with Hazard on the left and uh, rotating Oscar or Matt out on the right, and uh, eventually, through your guys' uh, uh, inf influential comments I guess is the uh, is the way to phrase it we moved Hazard to the right and brought Schurler in on the left and he really brought a whole new dimension to our attacking football I was particularly surprised and pleasantly surprised with Andre Schurler in the season just gone and uh, to go along with the biggest or biggest positive surprise the best incoming transfer that is actually going to go to Arturo Vidal of course he is currently injured picked up an injury in uh, the Champions League final but uh, he's out for two months so hopefully he'll be fit before the start of the next season may miss pre-season but uh, should be there for the start of the BPL season came in for 15 and a half million you can see he's already gone up one rating to 86 he's now valued at 20 and a half and having come into the club in January where we were in a, a patch of form that was just inconsistent at best he really solidified our midfield held down that starting lineup uh, alongside Ramirez was absolutely fantastic for us all season long and as you can see his technical attributes have been improving as well considering he's 27 I mean it's not old by any means but in FIFA terms he's only got two or three years left in him so to still be improving across the board this uh, quote unquote late on in his career FIFA wise then uh, I'm very very pleased with uh, with Arturo Vidal as have you guys been as well now I have only got the one goal of the season and I will show that at the end of the video but the goal of the season is the uh, the goal from Andre Scherler against Marseille absolutely fantastic strike I will leave that footage in at the end for you to watch after uh, after the uh, the squad report that we're going to go through at the end of the episode this is actually turning out to be a lot longer than I uh, I 
potentially wanted it to be so I do apologize if this has gone on too long but let's get to the two big awards then shall we the subscribers player of the year whilst we're on him is Arturo Vidal there weren't that many uh, that many suggestions in the comments for the subscribers player of the year but Arturo Vidal was the most commented at the stage of recording of course between now and the time you see this there may be some more comments etc but as I'm recording this Arturo Vidal is your choice for player of the year which is surprising considering he is a new transfer into the club he's only been here six months but he made such that he made such a positive impact coming into the club changed our fortunes around we moved up the table we progressed through to the final of all three cup competitions and I think it was he was integral to every single competition this year. Really, really fantastic player for us. And he wins the Subscriber Player of the Year. Now, the overall Player of the Year award, the big one, I, it, I was torn. I really was torn between Fernando Torres and Andre Scherler. Now, obviously, Torres held the team together, drove us forward on the attacking sense, was scoring the goals that we needed to be competitive on all fronts. But... Andre Scherler is going to be the one that's going to get the Player of the Year award this year. Not only for his sheer just ability to shock me in his consistency, consistency throughout the entire season and his ability to just force his way into that first team and hold down that first team spot. He didn't just uh, kind of take the opportunity when uh, we moved Hazard to the opposite flank and then just kind of just be an extra body on the pitch. He he dug in. He was solid defensively as well he tracked back a lot which is something that you could say he doesn't necessarily do too much of in real life or perhaps you might say Willian does that a little bit more in real life than Andre Scherler but um, but Andre Scherler was a fantastic player for us this year he took me by surprise and I was delighted with his performance all year long so Andre Scherler is the player to win the player of the year awards for the Chelsea team for the season 2013-2014 so let's go back to the top then and go through the uh, the squad report. I'm not going to go into too much depth on each player. I'm just going to scroll through whilst we discuss some other things. So, of course, this week we are going to be having Team of the Year pack openings coming to you as extra episodes throughout the week. Of course, we will also have the, uh, the Career Mode series, which will be going through the World Cup. We've got the England... Uh, at Rio 2014 competition uh, kind of mini series like we did with the French team the French side in the uh, in the Spurs career mode on uh, on current gen so uh, we'll be going through that that'll be coming to you over the next few days of course we will still have the uh, the interactive road to division 1 coming out on Wednesday as well and then on Saturday depending on how long the uh, the the England run goes in the World Cup we may be back to the Chelsea career mode uh, by the end of the week hopefully not hopefully we'll be able to uh, to progress through to the uh, the latter stages of the competition and then to the semi at least the semi final would be uh, would be very pleasing to uh, to get that far with England so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that but of course we will have another World Cup squad builder at the end of the week on Sunday the next side we're looking at is actually the Netherlands so of course in Group B there are two big sides in there the Netherlands and Spain and Holland will be the team that we're looking at first of those two of course we've already done Chile and Australia and the entirety of Group A if you missed any of these uh, videos by the way from any of the series this feel free feel free to check the channel page there are playlists of every single series that I've done on the channel either on my channel page or in the playlists playlist I guess is the way to phrase it but so there is a playlist of playlists if you uh, you check the channel page you will be able to find it and that there will be uh, lists of all of the series on this channel whether it be current gen or of course all of the next gen stuff we've been doing since uh, since the end of November when uh, when the next gen consoles come at, came out but uh, very very pleased with how the channel is going right now I have to say a huge thank you to you guys for the constant support you show it loads of likes loads of comments loads of new subscribers coming in it's absolutely fantastic and hopefully the rest of 2014 can be exactly the same as you can see in the background the uh, the players that were out on loan last year have actually come back now Romelu Lukaku has come back didn't make any improvements despite playing 25 games total for Everton although as you can see he didn't play too well 22 games 4 goals Thibaut Courtois uh, not really too sure how many games he played in, uh, in La Liga for Atletico Madrid but he played eight games in the Champions League you would presume he would have been their number one goalkeeper but actually didn't make any improvements either uh, Idan Hazard was with us Marco Marin playing at Sevilla didn't play any Champions League or European Cup competition uh, because Sevilla went in it but uh, you can't see any league form but again no improvements and again no improvements from uh, from Victor Moses despite being at Liverpool for the entire season and playing 43 games no improvements overall from him so uh, we will be looking to uh, to make some changes throughout the uh, the rest of the uh, the summer I'm looking for a winger I'm looking for a holding mid I'm looking for 
potentially a third goalkeeper, a backup goalkeeper, a youth goalkeeper. But uh, we may have Jamal Blackman staying at the club rather than going out on loan. I'm not entirely too sure what happens or what is going to happen there. If someone has sent me an invite to uh, to play awesome, I have no idea who that is. If that's you and you're watching this video, I'm sorry, I'm recording, I can't play you. But uh, that is going to bring this episode to a close, guys. I will have the uh, the goal of the season play in the background once I've finished the uh, the commentary, but. That's going to wrap the player rewards up. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. Sorry that it's gone on for so long, and I'm sorry that there aren't any flashy graphics, etc. But that's uh, that's not what I'm good at. I'm not very good at when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. So uh, feel free to leave the video a like if you did enjoy. Let me know if uh, you agreed or disagreed with any of the decisions that I made for the specific awards in uh, in this series or for this season. And uh, that's going to bring this one to an end so uh, feel free to subscribe if you uh, if you haven't already for the the next season of the Chelsea career mode leave me some transfer suggestions in the comment section down below I will try and do some extra mini uh, episodes for kind of transfer updates throughout the uh, the England at Rio mini series if I can if there's enough going on during the uh, during the World Cup tournament to uh, to bring out an extra uh, little mini episode then I will do that but I'll have to wait and see how it goes but I'm going to end it I've been waffled on for, uh, for too long we're over 15 minutes so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time